I can't hear you, but yes. Um, somebody, I love you too. My mum is here. Uh, someone bought some very nice beer for me. Called Helltown. And uh, it's delicious, so I'm going to drink it while we're doing this. Cheers. Goodness me, I can't see a thing. Um, right, so apparently there's no moderator. Which, um, which I'm down for these days, so I'm going to moderate this thing myself. Um, who's got a question? Oh my, they're on either side, okay, okay. So let's start, let's start this side then, and then we'll work our way to this side, and then back. Okay, hi. Um, the messaging on the show is based around compassion for others and understanding that dark and light exists within each person. And my question is, when was a time you expressed compassion and light in a seemingly dark scenario? And how do you think in acting through empowered kindness and love and all that? <laughs> So we're keeping it light still. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, gosh. Well, do you know what? I got asked a question the other day about what if you had a what, what legacy do you want to leave? What do you want people to think about you when you're no longer here? And um, I was brought up in a way where I was told to always try and at least lead with kindness in every situation. So I'd be quite happy. Um, if my gravestone said, Tom Ellis, he led with kindness, that would make me happy. <laughs> so I, to, I try and show compassion as much as I can in all areas of my life. Um, sometimes it's difficult, um, but at least try. At least try, because then at least someone's trying. Um, does that answer your question, kind of? It was a heavy question to start with, let's be fair. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being compassionate, but I try and answer it nicely. Okay. Thank you. Over here, please keep it light. Ladies and salutations, Sacred of the Lost Week. <laughs> Did you know what she's talking about? Well, Greetings. Do I go to the masters? Yes. Uh, if if, I, if you can get me in. I'm checking into every like public golf course on a military basis. <laughs> Any golf course that's on a military base? Florida, but if it wasn't for her, 
I wouldn't have even watched Lucifer. So we're both huge fans, and I would like to say, um, what was your, um, sorry, it's a little nerve uh, right. What was it like? <laughs> What was it like to play such a powerful character and do those scenes, you know, that were really like, wow? <laughs> I never thought to myself, wow, at the end of the scenes. That's okay. um, I mean, I had so much fun the whole time that we were doing it. And it, the, the best thing about playing Lucifer was that I didn't just get to do those scenes. I'd get one day to go and do one of those scenes. And then the next day I'd go and do something completely different, so silly and stupid, often with Kevin. Uh, and then the next day I'd go and do a song. And then the next day, I mean, it was just such a kind of blessing as an actor to be able to go in and do something different every day. Um, but, then, you know, there was occasions on the show where we did massive set pieces and it was so incredibly satisfying to pull them off. Um, things like in the finale of Six, with that whole sequence in the warehouse. Exactly, and it was like it was just as exciting for us to shoot it because the way that the, the show and our director wanted us to do it was in these in these chunks, in these pieces, to make it look seamless. So we had to learn. It was almost like learning a dance, but with fights instead, um, and like cable work and stuff. It was just you know it was a it was a whole big thing. But it was incredibly satisfying to do it, um, and also we didn't always have lots and lots of money to do it like the big old movies do. So it required people. Um, going above and beyond what their job description was in order to make something happen. And that was, that in itself was satisfying. Everyone was pitching and pulling it together to get this design effect. And, um, and it was great. We had so much fun doing it. Thank you so much. Thank you. This side. Hello, sir. The Republicans. <laughs> Things have happened. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not putting a gagging order on you. <laughs> Please do that what you want. Uh, does that answer your question? What was the question? <laughs> I'm just talking now. That's all I'm still Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. The Democrats.
Yeah. <laughs> um, when we shot that scene in the pilot, we were, it was like 2 a.m. in LA, so no, there was no one around. We were, shooting, we, we were filming on these really iconic streets. And I was in that car, you know, dressed the way I was dressed. And in, originally in the script, it was to the Rolling Stones. Um, I have um, Gimme, no, it's actually Gimme Shelter. It was Gimme Shelter that was in the script. And so our, our, our support truck that had the camera on it, they were blaring that out through the speakers. So I could hear it. So I was, li I was living in the montage, I was driving. Well, I was being driven on a, on a low level. But I was like, in this car, in this suit, and then LA lights, and just this music. And I was like, oh my god, this is happening. <laughs> I was trying to look cool. It was a, it was a tough game. Thank you. One more very quick. I want to know whose idea was it? I have kind of a clue. Whose idea was it to serve donuts in hell? In the last episode. <laughs>
I, yeah, no, I did. I had a quote that once upon a time said, and all those people were wonderful, Robert Carlyle especially, was just the most welcoming man. Robert Carlyle, like, he was a hero of mine as well, so to meet him and for him to be as nice as he was, I was it was great. Um, what happened was, they asked me to do an episode of it, uh, and I did. And then, they, and then I went away and got on with my life and the rest of my career and stuff, and then they said, do you want to come back and do more episodes? And I said, I can't, I'm doing something else, I'm really sorry. And that's literally how it went. Um, so it wasn't so much, the choice was made for me, basically. Um, but, uh, but Sean took over. Uh, Sean Moore, who's a lovely man, and did a great job with it. Um, so, you know, what, it, was, it was really nice, it, that was my first experience of being in Vancouver. And it was a really nice introduction to, to being in Vancouver and to meeting lots of crew members and stuff that ended up, I ended up working with on Lucifer a few years later. So there were, there were lots of positive aspects of that job. But yeah, it wasn't so much that I decided not to do it, it was just I wasn't able to. Thank you. There you go, very well. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Leanne, and I am uh, here with my trans son, Skylar. Actually, there's two nerves to come up here. So uh, I'm asking his question. Um, we are from Toronto, Canada, actually. Woo! Woo! Um, so what we wanted to know is if you and Chloe went on a date with um, Maze and Eve, oh, where were you? <laughs> Maybe when we went on a date with Maze and Eve, where would we go? It'd be quite fun to go to a music festival together, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> or share a tent. <laughs> See what happens, whatever. I, do. <laughs> I think that's probably what we do. Even that old wagon lovers. I don't know. <laughs> no one knows what wagon lovers is here. Wagon lovers is a chain of restaurants in the UK, which is delicious. Um, anyway, yeah, we'd go to a music festival. Does that answer your question? Thank you. I just made it up on the spot. Detective! <laughs> <laughs> it can be angry. Detective! 
safe. Or suggestive. Detective. There's a lot you can do. You can have a whole sentence just for the detectives. But anyway, thank you very much. Have you got any more questions? Where the babies come from? Thank you. 
Scarlet. I guess the question was, if you have, who was doing all these goodbyes at, at last one more so one, if you could have had one final scene with Scarlet <coughs> scene, what would you want? Mm. Um, I think in the sentimentality where we were at by the end of it, I think it would have got to a point where Lucifer might have told Trixie that he loved her. Aww. Oh no, exactly. I mean, I think I think that that's I think that's what he would have. I mean, you, you guys knew that already, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he would have just you know, it's taken him six seasons to get there. But I think he would have said that. It would have been really yeah. Thanks, buddy. So you were a little sentimental, aren't you, over there? Very nice. Hello. Um, I just like to know, like, what emotions did you feel after, like, the final filming of season six? <sighs> um. I, well, I kind of felt, it wasn't at the end, at the end I felt just a mixture of different things, but I'd, all, I'd also been allowed to, because we were, season five was going to be our last season, for a long, 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 long time. So I'd sort of got my head around the fact that we were finishing. And, and then when season six came along, um, it was almost an opportunity for, on a daily basis, to start to go through the grieving process. Um, so by the end of it, it's almost like I'd, I'd done my grieving. Um, I was incredibly, you know, knackered <laughs> and sad. Um, I was so, my overwhelming feelings, I felt so proud. I felt really proud that we'd got that far, that we'd done as many episodes that we had. But I think more than anything, I was proud of the atmosphere and the energy that we created uh, at Luke, if you came to work on the show, Lucifer, people wanted to come and do that because they'd heard what a great place it was to come and work. And that was a deep source of pride for me. So, um, yeah, I was, I was feeling a lot of feels, but I'd, I had a lot of time to kind of feel them, basically. Um, and also, I'd made such great friends that I knew that the end was the end, but it wasn't the end for me. You know, it was the end for our viewers, the story of it on screen, but, you know, I see these guys all the time, and we are, you know, we will be in each other's lives because we were such a sort of each other's lives for such a long time, and for something that was a big part, you know, it was a big thing in each of our lives, how this show was, and how successful the show became. So, does that answer your question? Yes. Thank Good. Thank you. <laughs> Um, uh, my name is Max, so obviously like everyone here really enjoyed uh, your performance as Lucifer. Uh, the episode where Father Frank dies in your arms really got to me. I saw that and I was like, oh. I was like holding back tears, but on the opposite end, Amy was here earlier, she was saying that uh, Tom never breaks character. You know, he's always like, this serious. So was there a time where you just broke or you just couldn't take it? Like, oh, I can't, I can't hold it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not in, normally not in like big emotional moments, um, but yeah, I mean there was odd times where we just couldn't stop. Like, I'm actually weird in that episode, which was you know my, one of my favourite moments, one of my favourite episodes. It had some of my favourite moments in it. I also remember that that is the episode where me, Lauren, and Coleman had to do a scene together, and for whatever reason, you know, it been a long day, we were really tired. And um, we've been waiting around for a bit, we've been rehearsing the scene together, we've been making each other laugh during that period of time. And there was a bit in the scene that Coleman just would make us laugh about. Anyway, we get to shooting it and we can't get through it. Because we just can't stop laughing. And it's like, it's, we're all like, what the Coleman, Coleman's here and there's me and next to him. And none of us, if you look at the scene, are looking at each other because we can't. <laughs> and if you look at it carefully, some of our shoulders are doing this. It's quite a serious moment. <laughs> and that, those, the, those moments are sort of few and far between. Um, but yeah, I, now and again you just can't help yourself. There is a moment when I could have broken character in a big emotional moment. And it was with Michael Imperioli, who played Uriel. 
And you remember the scene where Lewis was Bill's urinal, right? Yeah. He's standing. And then he's holding it, and then he can't believe what he's done, and his brother's dying in his arms, and Uriel's it. And then Uriel has to lean into Lucifer's ear and tell him a valuable piece of information, right? And the, the information was, the peace is here, right? That was the line. So we're going for it. Big old Zoom stab, oh, brother, dear, no, And then Imperial, he pulls me over, and he goes to my ear, and he goes, the pizza's here. <laughs> It's fantastic. Right. It's from Pittsburgh. I knew I liked it. Did you know that Pittsburgh is twinned with the Sheffield, which is where yes, I grew up? Yes, I did. It's the sister city of Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to go to Pittsburgh and tell people from Pittsburgh that. Because they might have a clue, won't they? No. Um, I can actually tell you a lot about Pittsburgh. We'll do that after we go to Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to know if there was anything that you brought from your own experience of being a twin to your portrayal of Michael Wilson? Ooh, if I did, it was probably subconscious, to be honest. Um, it, you know, sometimes I forget I'm a twin. It's not that I forget I have a twin, that I have a sister, but it's just that when you, like, I think when people talk about the twin experience, it's, it's to do with um, identical twins more often than not, and not paternal <coughs> twins. Um, so, uh, I didn't have an awful lot to draw on, apart from maybe the fact that I was a bit annoyed that we had to share a birthday that year. <laughs> like that, was, that, that, was the, that was my overwhelming like, answer to the question about being a twin when I was growing up. Um, but no, I didn't, I didn't, there was nothing I really drew on from that, because I really liked my sister. <laughs> yeah. And she's a, she's a primary school, she's a head teacher at a primary school in Sheffield. Yes! Yes, thank you! But she's great, eh? Um, but yeah, I, 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 so I didn't draw on that. I didn't draw on that because I really just liked him too much. <laughs> anyway, but thank you for the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Actually, were Lucifer, what would you do? 
<laughs> oh my god. Um, I think I've run for Prime Minister of the UK. And President of the United States. I feel like if I was running both countries, we could have a lot of good influence on the rest of the world. Hell yes. Thank you. Um, um. Okay, let's stop there. I'm Tom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much.